Hello and welcome to My Living Room. I'm Kathleen Hirschner. Today I have a special guest in the studio with me and I've been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. I'm sure you're going to know him, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time introducing him. Alberto Alonso, welcome finally. Hello, thanks for having me. To the set. Great, great. It's great to be here in your living room. Well, I'm sharing it with you today. It's great. You have a lot of lights in your living room. I know. <laughs> it's it's better the better to see you with, my dear. Yeah, absolutely. You're looking very nice today. Thank you. I dressed up specially for you. Okay. Great. And I found out when I saw you that you were wearing the same colors as as I am. Well, yeah. This is the uniform. I mean, this is our our Vaughn uniform. We though. always dress like this for work, Abs don't we? Absolutely. We're very serious and very professional. <laughs> well, we actually both have been involved in the acting, the world of acting, and actors are known for working as waiters and waitresses. I did so for many years in New York, yeah. This is a very common uh, form of attire. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alberto, I don't yeah. get to see you that often. I mean, we both have shows on Aprende Inglés, we right. both work at Vaughn Systems, but we, we run into each other at the radio we sometimes. We run into each other in the hallway, but yeah. I've interviewed you a few times. Um, yeah. I've probably forgotten a lot of the answers that you've given to my questions. So I think maybe today we're Me just Me too. <laughs> I probably know. Dude, we're just going to have a conversation sure. and have a normal way of speaking. And maybe it would be good for you to start out by telling the viewers what you're up to these days. Um, what am I not up to? We've got, we've got so many things going on now. I, as you know, I work uh, with R&D, I Mas De. Uh, That's right. You're not just in front of the camera. You're behind the scenes. I work behind the scenes well. as well. So uh, developing content, uh, new ideas. Uh, also directing talent, developing talent as well, uh, and a lot of exciting projects with materials. Uh, a project that uh, we're working on now, or just finishing up, is the the PSP game Sony Play English, which you're in. I, re and, uh, I remember doing that. It's been a while ago, that, because of course you record the things long before the, sure. the thing is finished. And then it goes into production. Sure. I remember my character was somebody named Susan Corvette. That's right, Suzanne <laughs> Corvette, and you were an auction house owner or something. But it's going to be great. It's going to be excellent. I think it was like a woman who, a businesswoman. Yep. So I had to dress for the part oh, today. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were business. Yeah, definitely. all business. Yeah. And it was something like a Sotheby's or Christie, you know, one of those like Some ritzy, auction nice thing. auction house. And uh, well, the story, just for people who don't know, it's, it's about a secret agent and Richard Vaughn, or Richard Vaughn, speaks to that secret agent. That's me, Jaime Rubio, You're blonde, James Blonde. <laughs> It's kind of a play on words. <laughs> That's good. You you're, the, you're the secret spy. And, uh, and the audience has to go, they have to, all these missions that they have to accomplish uh, to move forward, and, and they, they're using their English to, to solve the crime. And it's, it's awesome. Oh, so in order to see what happens next in the story, you have to answer the English, you have to get Absolutely. to the next level of English correctly. So Richard will say to me, ask her how many people there were in the room last night. Ah. And you have to formulate the question, and then the character will say the question. That's a great uh, idea. So you're a secret agent. It's a real. It's called Play English. It's for Sony, exclusively for Sony PSP, PlayStation Portable, which is the small one. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome, and it's going to be available soon. Yeah, well, pos possibly by the time this airs, it'll be out, and it'll Yay. be the biggest sensation. So it's, uh, we're really excited. As I said, you've worked on it, and well, a lot of people. I worked on it, uh, but to be honest with you, I just went in and read the thing, and I didn't really know the, you did the a great secret job. agents. But, well, <laughs> I mean, it was not that challenging, but I think it was a lot of fun. Well, it's, as you know, with video games and things, it's, everything's very top secret. So... Uh, as soon as I have more stuff, I'm going to show you it. But that's uh, true in the world of IT, like software development. I mean, those people have to like sign away their yeah. families and their houses. They're very strict not... uh, on the content. Uh, I've played the game in the developer's office. I have not played the game uh, officially yet uh, on a, a PSP. I have never played mm. a PSP. You're going to love it. I, I even well, I don't even you're even gonna Anglo's say. are going to love it just because you're going to recognize some of the voices. It's a great fun game and. Uh, the music makes you really nervous, so you have to answer the questions quickly. And time does count. So it really is a challenge. It goes through the whole Vaughn method, but it's a game. So it's a lot of fun. Well, I'm going to have to go through, through some sort of training program to learn I'll help how you to out. use I'm I, Agent Jaime Rubio. I, I got your back. Jaime <laughs> Rubio. That's good. James Blonde. Well, so <laughs> now for those people who obviously have been your fans watching you on yep. your... You've done several shows, English on the Go. Sure, yeah. All of these things that have been mm -hmm. running. I mean, you... Of all the people I think that have been working in this television on this channel, are the most recognized of all of us. And I no, think, Richard. I think I well, think maybe Rick, Richard. the boss. He's because, okay, and I'm boss. not saying that because he's the boss, but uh, he's been doing it for 35 years. Yeah. So people are probably the most familiar with him. No, you're right. I mean, um, surely Richard, of course, is is the, is the jefe. But you get recognized a lot because you have a oh, big yeah. personality. Yeah. You look 
sort of like you're Spanish and you're maybe something else. Uh, Mediterranean I, blooded. You're really. Mediterranean dude, half Italian, I think. Yep, absolutely. Half Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, but you do have a very gregarious uh, personality. Yeah, I've, I get recognized very often, sometimes even for my voice. I'm sure it's happened once, to you. Once, once, in a bar. Some Where woman came up like, and says, I recognize your voice from yeah. somewhere. Yeah, the, I had someone, I, I was like, dos ruedas, por favor. I said it in Spanish, and someone behind me said, the, uh, he said, the host with no name. And the name of my radio program is The Show With No Name. That's and I was cool. like, how did you know? He goes, I listen every day. I, I like The Host With No Name. The that's Host With No Name, that's me, The Host With No Name. You know, name. I've, I don't get recognized that often, but that's because I stay at home most of the time. But when, okay. when I do have friends to come, that come to visit me from the United States or when my family was here, right. I would like take them to places where I thought the, the chances would be better, so I could feel sure, sort of special. Sure. And my mom's like, Busy wow. Busy places. <laughs> El Corte. Yeah. And then my mom's like, wow, you get recognized a lot. And I'm like, well, it depends on where you go. Right, right. Well, I, I, the thing is, Kathleen, I, I do a lot of walking. I'm trying to get in shape. Yeah. Uh, and right now I'm doing a lot of walking. And it's funny, if you walk and you come across maybe, uh, mm. I would say, 5,000 people. And if you walk for an wow. hour, you could easily, through Civeles in that area, come across 5,000 people. So out of those 5,000, there are always a few. True. And then there are the ones who look at you and oh, they yeah. smile, but they don't say anything. Oh, they say yeah. like, I know who you are. <laughs> I like it <laughs> when know? two people are, 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 are talking and one of them recognizes you and then you see them do this. Yeah, yeah, the little they whisper. They whisper and then the person that they're <laughs> whispering to goes like this. And then they look. Yeah, and yeah. you're like, hi. Yeah. That's the, so, uh, it's an old move, it's an old move. I like it. Yep. So what are you getting in shape for, just for yourself? Um, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm no spring chicken, as the expression is. Well, honey, you, I've got a few chicken years on you. Well, no, I, I think it's important. I think it's important uh, to, to be in shape and, uh, yeah. I, you well, know, in, your, in our line my of health, work, you know? for health purposes, because when you're healthy, you, you, you feel better, and when you feel better, you probably perform better. Uh, you're healthy. I know you, you eat a lot of vegetables and... <laughs> Is this true? I mean, I know you you do some. I don't want to get into it because no, I know you. I don't mind talking. But you're about very it. strict uh, with what you put in your body as I'm well. I'm not as strict as some people, but I will say that getting older really got my attention. Right, you started about, paying attention what you eat, what time you eat, uh, the habits really yeah, that are associated with eating. Yeah, because I got a little bit lazy when I first moved here. I've been in Spain for a few years, and mm. when I first came, I was like a lot of people: jamón, oh, tortilla. I could eat it all day. Cerveza, I could know. eat jamón all day. And my diet was not like that in San Francisco, so I was like, after a couple months, I was like, uh oh. The cañas uh, too. There's uh, another thing you got to got to remember these cañas after work. It's just it's perfect. I mean, the caña may be like this big, but yeah. when you have six of them. Well, the first one doesn't even count. If no. you notice, you know, it's a hot day in the summer. You go to a terraza, a little terrace with your friend. The first one, you're like, okay, let's get another one. Well, it's that's like, just to wet your lips. Exactly. You got to exactly. wet your lips, so, wet your whistle, so, exactly. as we say in yeah. English, so that you can prime your body for the rest of the mm. services. Well, I'm very impressed that yeah. uh, you're you're on a health kick. Yeah, I think it's it's all. I mean, the key word is balance. I think you're looking moderation. good. You're Thank you. Whatever Thank you're doing, you. I think it's working. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I you know I. I was telling, joking around with you in some of the texts before we came on. Mm. Um, I take more time now right. in taking care of myself. When you're younger, you don't really have to. Uh, you, you don't, don't even, even have to worry about it. You, you don't can, even comb your hair you know, when you're younger. Yeah. You can abuse yourself a little bit, wake up sure. the next morning, you're good to go. Mm. But when you get to my point in life, you're like, okay, this is going to be a little bit more labor intensive. Sure, sure. But uh, I'm, yeah. I'm willing to do it. Well, it's okay. A little maintenance, you know, uh, you got to take care of it. It's like an older car. You know, not that we're old, but <laughs> you got to take care of it more. You know what I mean? It's not like a new car where, you know, you can drive like, like crazy, just fill the gas tank. But, you know, I, you got to service it from time to time. Now, that's another, <laughs> that's another question. You know? I like being, being compared to an older car. Classic. I know, classic, I wasn't talking about you. I know, but I'm, t I, but I'm enjoying that, though. A classic model. There you I'm go. A classic Roadster. There you go. Mercedes Benz 280 SL. I think I want to be a Stingray, a Corvette Stingray, those ones with the big. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think they came out in the 70s. Like well, me, I came out in the 70s. You did, well. <laughs> the late 70s I came out. Uh, well, you, know, you got to be careful when you're a man about, mm -hmm. I think, about what type of sports car you choose because women might perceive that as A, you're either trying to show off. Sure. B, you're compensating for some one. lack of uh, sure. physical attributes. Sure, sure. Maybe like a very short and... Whatever. You, you, yeah, sure. You could be, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, have a Napoleon complex. Absolutely. And then get a Hummer. Right. Which would be kind of stupid. Well, I, think, I think Gary Coleman, who's a, 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 a small person, yeah. I mean, he's an actor, he was a child actor. I think he's deceased now, actually. Oh, okay, well, yeah. I know, but I saw something a few years ago on MTV or something where he was driving a Hummer, and I said, 
How does he get in the Hummer? You know, know and the Hummer would, without making a pun here, the Hummer yeah. would just dwarf him yeah, even yeah. more. I mean, make, make him smaller than he is because, I mean, Hummers are... are a Hummer is, is it really, it was designed as a military vehicle, <laughs> you know? And, and then you see people in Manhattan, in New York City, driving around with a Hummer, and you're like, where are you going? Are you going to drive through Central Park? I mean, what's your plan? It's crazy. Well, now, you, you grew up, I believe, part of the time in New York City. Absolutely. In Manhattan, years. also in Brooklyn. I You're a New well. Yorker. You probably feel like a New Yorker, having yeah, grown up there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But I'm, you spent your I summers here in Spain. In Almeria, sure. In, in Almeria. In the south of Spain, where my father's from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you, I think, are like me in that I like to go back to the United States not too often, yeah. But maybe once, twice a year. To yeah, yeah. See. Once a year is usually good because you know, twice a year, uh, you know, uh, vacation time at work. Also, you know, being with your family is great, but it's not the. It's not always a relaxing vacation, no. and sometimes you need to to get away just to relax and to, you know, to disconnect from family, work, everything. You well, know. you do, and when I go back to visit my parents who live in Kansas, my mother always says the same thing at the beginning of the trip. We're not in Kansas anymore. No, 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 she, no. no that's cute, though, but she always says to me, now I know you're going to get tired of being here after three or four days. You're like, you're giving me only three, <laughs> you're like, I'm thinking 24 hours. <laughs> I never say the truth, because I love my parents, but she always knows that within like four days, I'm starting to go, Right, right. Mm, you're like, you know, get me out of here, get please. Get me back to San Francisco. <laughs> No, I, I, I'm happy to go back and visit. I don't want to Kansas. go. Kansas. What, what is Kansas? I mean, what obviously, like? Kansas, the stereotype of Kansas is it's farms and things like this. Is it really true to its stereotype? Yep. Yep. I would say that the stereotype that you've just said, it's full of farms, full of land. Good food, then? Good, uh, you know, fresh vegetables? And... Yes. Reasonably good food. I would mm. say that California, which is known as the bread basket of sure. the United States. Don't I mean, even they, talk to me about bread. Uh, they have, but they have everything. California yeah. has all vegetables, all fruits. Kansas is an agricultural place that is known for corn and okay. wheat, mostly for wheat. Okay. It's flat from two thirds of the of the state. The eastern third is rolling, gently rolling hills. Into the mountains, I guess. There are no mountains. Oh, okay, no. No, okay. the mountains are in Colorado. We okay. go to Colorado to see them, but no, it's an agricultural uh, state. Okay. It, I, I, there is nothing that similar in Spain other than maybe Castilla, La Mancha. Right. Hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Could be like Jaén. Jaén maybe. Jaén is extremely there. hot in the summer, yeah. and and it's uh, olive production. It's the center in Spain, which our number one product, I believe, in the United States is corn, and here I think it's olive. So it's kind of like a nice parallel really, there. Yeah. But, well, I wish um, I wish our main crop in the United States were were, were all was olives. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is olive. corn. Corn yeah. is taking up vast tracts of land. Have you seen uh, this documentary, uh, not to go off the Food Inc.? Yep. Pretty it, crazy, Yeah, huh? it, it really opens your eyes about getting back to diet, about yeah. what you take in your body, because what it's looks crap. like... It's well, <laughs> What looks like a natural product from nature, mm. if it's been engineered and if it has been, you know... It's got all kinds of chemicals. It, it's incredible. And it's incredible how what they do with corn. They have a surplus of corn, and what they do is they put corn in everything, they a do. syrup, a sugar, they mix a chemical with it, take a chemical out, components, and they, they make all these different products that are definitely not natural. <laughs> no, I mean, corn is, is like a basis for many chemicals and many things that you right. don't think of as food. Corn syrup, even in hairspray, you'll I see know. corn. I mean, I'm not even talking about food products. They just put corn, they find a way yeah. to engineer corn to put it in everything. Poor it's a very corn. interesting documentary. Poor corn, though. I poor mean, it's corn. Poor corn. And poor animals, because, uh, you know, they're feeding the corn to cows, to chicken, livestock. And these animals are not supposed to eat, well, at least the, no. the livestock, they're supposed to eat grass. And a lot of these diseases that the cows get come from them having the wrong diet. Exactly. If they ate a diet that had no fat, like the grass, then they wouldn't get uh, these diseases. Yeah, because these cows. animals do not, by nature, eat grain. Yeah. And we force them and to eat And they're forced grain. because it's cheap, because yeah. it's easy, because it, well, who knows? Whatever well, reasons. you are, you're pretty well read on this subject. I know I my, am, my stuff. I'm, 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 I'm trying to be healthy. I'm trying. There's another movie called King Corn. King Corn. King Corn. Okay. It's sort of like food. Sounds like King Inc. Kong. <laughs> it sounds like King Kong, but it's King Corn. It's about two guys, and they make a documentary uh, following the trail of corn. Okay. In the United States, from the beginning of the, from its germination. Right. And growth to its end. Okay, it's, it's for the a, final product. And it's a comedy and, as well. It's quite funny. Okay, I'll check it out. It's King quite Corn. funny.
I'll definitely check it out. Oh, I don't know, Alberto. If you keep this up, you might be having your own health show. Who knows? Next. We could do one together on Wouldn't a friend named fun? Grace. We could do. Uh, we could teach like the smoothie of the day and teach like different that. ingredients and. Uh, yeah, I don't know, find different, uh, I'm, right now I'm trying to find new ways to prepare vegetables and fish and things that are, are healthy for you and just try to be creative. Well, if you can get used to eating food in its natural state, yeah. in terms of vegetables and fruits, sure. and not prepare it at all, that's right. the best. Um, sometimes I eat raw fish. I take salmon. Okay. And I don't eat meat, but I eat fish occasionally. And I macerate it with lime juice. Sure, great. Overnight. Yeah. Well, not even overnight for a couple hours. Sure, sure. It it kills the bacteria. Right. Kill and it sort of cooks the flesh a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, I know you, this is like a ceviche. It reminds it's me. It's like of, ceviche. In it cooks, uh, the actual acidity cooks the fish. Exactly. It's wonderful. So and healthy. Most cultures have a form of a raw fish food. Yeah. Well, in in sushi, America, the obvious one. Sushi. You've got ceviche in Spain. Oh, and and in Latin America. I in Latin it's America. I made from Peru or from Chile. I know big. They're some of the origins of ceviche. Exactly. Well, any any mm. place in the world where fish is part of the diet. And it's fresh, and you can get access to fresh fish. In yeah. Hawaii, they call it poke. No. Poke is like ceviche. It's very similar. Okay. But they, okay. they use tuna. Sure. Because they. I think I've actually had a dish like that when I was in Puerto Rico. They had a Hawaiian tuna dish. It was probably that was poke. raw, and it was brilliant. Did if it Excellent. had a, if it had a little bit of sea seaweed in it. Oh, it was and incredible. And a little bit of onion and a little bit of green pepper. It yep. was poke. Very delicately yeah. seasoned, but wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I like, uh, I started out on my health kick for myself, for mm -hmm. selfish reasons. Right, totally right. vanity yeah, that's, You have to be selfish when it comes to your health. Well, whatever it is that motivates you to begin something. Mm -hmm. And then as I got into it and learned more, I was like, you know, I'm starting to feel better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, oh, you, know. you notice it, I mean, instantly, the first few days are very difficult, but yeah. I eliminated carbohydrates, sugar, uh, and at first uh, I felt like, I was like, this is what a junkie feels. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, it must be. I was like, ah. Yeah. And I even told people at work, I said, forgive me. Uh, but now, uh, after I've, my body has gone through this withdrawal and I've learned to, to be fine without it, yeah. I'm okay. I feel, I feel energy. I feel good. Yeah. Well, I was reading something this morning on the internet, of course, because God forbid I read a book anymore. But I was it's just reading, so passe. <laughs> it's so passe. Unless old. it's an e-book. <laughs> it's so old-fashioned. Right. But I was reading something about, uh, on a, we weirdly, on an astrology website. Okay. I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of interested in it, but I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. Right, right. But it said that if, it said that if you can learn to eliminate the things that you're compelled to do, mm -hmm. like eating poorly or smoking. Eating a lot at night. Eating a lot at night, drinking, smoking, whatever it is that you're, that you feel a strong compulsion to do. Mm -hmm. If you can identify those and eliminate them, yes, it's painful, yeah. but in the end, those are the things that are getting in your way. Yeah, you're not a slave to anything, as my yeah. father says. Exactly. I mean, that, the idea is to not, not be a slave, when it's clavo, to anything. Uh, you got to move on. To coffee, on. to substance, to people, yeah. to different, to Bad situations in your situations. life. Sure. You have to be, uh, you can't be a slave, you can't. Uh, if you're a slave to food, that means food controls you. And a lot of people, I mean, yeah. a part of the reason I love to eat, I just love to eat. Yeah. Well, <laughs> see, I think I was a bit more of the slave for a while. Mm -hmm. I got kind of obsessed with certain things, and even with, with areas of health, people can get too, they can become obsessed. Oh yeah, no, with that's health. another, there's, there's, there are two extremes. Yeah, and then you know, that's being not good either. Uh, morbidly obese and, being extremely underweight, uh, which is another epidemic. Well, America. of course. I mean, that's that's a big a scourge very in the United problem. States. Yeah. One of the things that uh, that I, the way I like to approach this mm. is, if I go to somebody's house for dinner mm. and they make dinner, and while I consider myself a vegetarian, I end up eating a little bit of chicken. I don't freak out. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. No, no, I don't go like, oh my god, I've been poisoned with toxic. No, you just, in order to be gracious, you just kind of like whatever I mean mm -hmm. it's one day right yeah it's no big deal yeah. so tell me what else is uh, I forget what else we were going to talk about cultural things I don't know we've already covered that uh, what do you let me ask you a question sure whatever this, you want this is not a loaded question this is the shoot. same question you could ask me shoot once we move beyond this phase of what we're doing now mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it media yeah. TV whatever mm -hmm. um, and you could do something next in yeah. your next career because you know I changed careers when I was 40 okay and you're not great. there yet okay so, what, so I have I still have a few changes you got left. a few years you got more changes great what what could you see yourself doing like when you're my age I think I'd like to have a little uh, as you call in Spanish a little shack a little chiringuito on the beach 
Oh, that'd be nice. And so I just have fresh fish and, uh, yeah, something real simple, like I think. Like in one I of the wanna, islands? A little simple, you know, have a nice, beautiful view every morning when I wake up of, of some tropical view. I don't know, something, uh, maybe travel, do something helping people. Who knows? I mean, you never know the future, but these are things I love. I love traveling. Um, I love helping people if, if yeah. I can. Um, I think yeah. you're a little bit like me, too, in that you like to be alone a part of the time. Yeah, oh no, I, I need my alone time. Yeah. I, if I'm with too many people, I, and I'm noticing it more and more as I get older. Listen, I, I sound like an old man today. <laughs> as I get older, at least, listen, you kids, uh, when I was a kid, you know, I said that the other day. Oh no. I was like, esta, esta juventud, these kids, and I was like, oh no. You young people. <laughs> I sound like my grandfather. Oh dear, you gotta break that habit. Well, man. we have the same name, so it was a, it was yeah. bound to happen. You and your grandpa? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you could probably make enough money if you had a successful chiringuito, and you're an excellent salesman. Yeah, so, I mean, you. you no, you could sell ice to an Eskimo. That's the, that's as the expression. We, yeah. As we say. Yeah. Um, but you could probably do that and make enough money to live. You might have to adjust your way of living. Sure, well, at the beach, what, what else do you need? You need a little... Flip-flops? Uh, a a kayak, uh, you know, a couple little things, and, uh, and that's it. I'd like to have... a fishing have, pole, you could well, get you your could, own food. Uh, that'd be nice. I'd like to have a, a, an animal sanctuary. That's cool. Someday. That's really I'd cool. I'd like to, to have a place where animals that have either been mistreated or aren't wanted anymore. Right, have like a, a place to play. Have a play place to, to hang out yeah. and chill for the rest of their lives. Now the, uh, Not the, in cages, but have like an area open to them like. Exactly. The, like I, a little pond area, like a, you know. Like, like a little a, nirvana mm -hmm. for them. Sure, sure. Uh, a lot of like these it. animals have had. What kind of, would you have like crazy exotic animals or would you have more like dogs, cats? I mean like. Oh, that's a good question. Would you have question. like iguanas and lizards and, and snakes and stuff? Well. Or? Sharks. <laughs> I think I'd have to, if I was going to do it the right way, I'd have to be an equal opportunity animal sanctuary operator. Any animal that was injured or... In, yeah. Oh, I'm a little afraid bold. of snakes. I'm petrified. I'm so. not a snake person or... I hate it. But I probably <laughs> could do it. I don't know. Well, you could also hire people, too, once the snakes come Snake on. Snake handlers. <laughs> yeah. You well, hire someone. The, 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 the objective would be to not let animals come into the world for a life of pain and misery. Sure, so to rescue I, or save an animal's life. Rescuing yeah. is one aspect, but I also like the other aspect, which is how do we stop that train right. from rolling into the station? Because a lot of animals are born and they just have a crappy sure, life. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what they, they say, actually, pet shops are the worst places yeah. you can go. They said if you, if you want a, a pet, a dog or a cat, the best thing to do is go to a shelter. Yeah, That's go true. Get, go get an animal that, you know, because First, the, the pet shops, what I've heard, I, again, I'm not the most informed person, but I'd like to know a little bit about different subjects yeah. that interest me. And I love dogs, uh, cats. Uh, I'm afraid of cats. They, they don't trust cats. I don't trust them. I don't know. <laughs> Sneaky I, uh, devils. Do not trust the cats. But dogs, <laughs> they're faithful. They'll be there until the end. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I heard that you know they breed them, the, the, the way they're bred and the way that they bring up these animals is cruel. Yeah. And, what you're doing in the other sense is you're giving one a chance that, that lost its chance already, that well, was found or was beaten or was sick or uh, adult, you know, you're giving the dog, it's almost like adopting a child. You're giving a child a second life. Well, if you love your pet, and, and I know people, including my mother and myself even, who like animals sometimes more than people. Well, I, I fall into that <laughs> category depending on the day, but I'm, I yeah, think there's I, sometimes that you're like, absolutely. the animal's smarter than the person. Well, and they also, they also accept you unconditionally. There are many of yeah. Unconditional love, they don't challenge you. you know, my, they don't talk back. They don't talk back. My dog, Scout, was from a pet shop. Mm -hmm. I rescued her, kind of, mm -hmm. but she turned out to be okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, there are so many things that I'd like to do. Now, I'm, I feel like the, that I'm running out of time. We're yeah. running out of time as well we? on the okay. program. I Time's <laughs> I... flying. I don't know how, how long we've been on the show. Well, but... Alberto, you're going to have to come back. Yeah, sure. You have to come yeah, back yeah. and we can pick up where we left off. Always, always. Well, you and I probably have, what, a thousand topics that we Easily. could explore. Easily. And we like to talk. We're talkative people. <laughs> we are. I think we are. We're loquacious. It's, good. it's, it's a good thing that we're on a talk show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Two talkative people on a talk show. It works. It's, it's a marriage made in heaven. That's right. Alberto Alonso, thank you so much for coming today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's always great to talk to you. And sure. thank you for tuning in to another interesting conversation in English here in my living room. Adios. Have a great day. Bye-bye.